for Burnaby South. Living crisis, which is hurting people. And the Liberals kept saying that it's not our fault and it's worse in other countries. And then we've got a leader of the opposition who thinks you can magically opt out of the inflation by buying cryptocurrency, which ended up tanking and hurting people. So you got say nothing and do nothing and new Democrats who force this government to put more money in their pockets. But my question is, what took this government so long to act when people needed respect and support? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today is indeed a great day for Canadians. We're talking about helping Canadians with the affordability of the cost of living right now by having a $500 top-up to the Canada Housing Benefit, introducing a new Canada Dental Benefit Plan, also making sure that we double the GST credit. Mr. Speaker, if we look at the 20 budget, the 2021 budget, the 2022 budget, this Liberal government has been making life more affordable for Canadians, including childcare, including the Canada Workers' Benefit. Mr. Speaker, this government is delivering for Canadians, and that's what Canadians expect. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. Les coûts des épiceries ont augmenté. Grocery prices have gone up 10% on average, but CEOs of big grocery companies have raked in the profits. Their greed has contributed to inflation, and that's hurting families. When will this government force these CEOs to pay their fair share and reinvest? to help families, to help people throughout the country. The Honourable Minister of Tourism, Mr. Speaker, we have been and will be de determined to ensure that everyone pays their fair share of tax. We have increased income tax on corporations by 1.5% for the biggest banks and insurance companies, and we have a recovery dividend of 15% on excess profits made by these corporations during COVID. Mr. Speaker, we have a good tax plan with this government. On Saturday, this Liberal government will change the rules for EI, making it harder for workers to get the benefits that they've earned. Canadian workers are caught between a rock and a hard place. On one side, we have the Liberals punishing workers by cutting EI and keeping their wages at rock bottom. And on the other side, we have Conservatives intent on abandoning workers altogether who are hardest hit by this economy. In a time when workers are struggling with the rising cost of living, this this Liberal government is choosing to make them suffer more. Will this Liberal government immediately stop the changes to EI and finally fix the broken system? The Honourable Minister of Employment. Speaker, as our COVID pandemic um, economic measures wind, wind down, I can assure everyone in this House that we continue to support workers, we continue to be there for workers, we are working very hard to modernize the EI system, EI sickness will be in place to 26 weeks by the end of this year. I'll also remind everyone here, pardon me, I'll also remind everyone here that we have recovered 113% of the jobs lost during the pandemic. We have incredibly low unemployment rate. Our economic rebound has been incredibly extraordinary given everything this world is going through at this time. The Honourable Member for Winnipeg Centre. Mr. Speaker, people are struggling with the rising cost of living. Things are getting harder. Mr. Speaker, instead of helping, the Liberals are clawing back the Canada Child Benefit. And guess who will hit, be hit the hardest, Mr. Speaker? Single parent mothers struggling to make ends meet. This is cruel. Families need more support to pay rent and feed their children, not less. Will the Liberals reverse these clawbacks and ensure that families who receive pandemic support are not unfairly penalized? The Honourable Minister for Families. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In fact, we understand the high cost of living. And in fact, when we came into office in 2015, we got rid of the universal child care benefit that the Conservatives were sending to millionaires and instead brought in the Canada Child Benefit that can provide almost up to $7,000 a year for children under the age of six for lowest income families. And in fact, Mr. Speaker, we raised the Canada Child Benefit this summer indexed to inflation because we understand how much families rely on this money to make sure that they can give their children Children, what they need. Mr. Speaker, we've been there for families and we'll keep being there. Thank you very much. Here. For Courtney Alberni. Mr. Speaker, this summer, 21 families a day 
buried their loved ones because of the toxic drug crisis. This is devastating, but it was foreseeable. The Public Health Agency of Canada warned that this crisis could continue to get worse. This is just weeks after the Liberals and Conservatives both voted against an NDP bill to create a national health-based strategy. So instead of supporting real solutions, the Liberals' inaction has cost lives. When will the Liberals fix their mistakes by creating a national health-based strategy to fight this crisis? The Honourable Minister of Health. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And we obviously are devastated by this news of every day so many Canadians dying of mental health issues, issues which can be cared for and prevented for by for for with the reason and examples that the member just gave. So we are invested. We are investing and very mindful of the need to invest in the mental health of Canadians. My colleague, Minister of, of Mental Health, is working very hard on that. She's announced many measures, and more will come. Yeah. No point of orders during question period. Reserve them until after. I know we're all a little bit rusty after all the rules. The Honourable Member for Victoria. Mr. Speaker, Scott Graham, a senior from my riding, is missing. He was last seen in Spain at the Canadian Embassy, visibly injured and without life-saving medication. Mm -hmm. His daughters feel like they've been left to investigate on their own. Scott reached out for help, but Canada's system to support people in an emergency failed. When Canadians go to their embassy, they expect to get help. When loved ones go missing abroad, they expect real action for families. What is the minister doing to support the family while making sure this never happens again. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I want to assure the, uh, the Honourable Member that we are very concerned for the well-being of Mr. Graham. The consular officials, both here in Ottawa as well as in Spain, have taken this very seriously and will continue to uh, uh, advise us as we continue to uh, search for information about his well-being and uh, be in contact with his friends and family as well. Uh, the minister has asked for a complete understanding of, of how the department and how the uh, embassy have uh, dealt with this situation, and we are happy to report back to the House at a later date.